the gospel of the kingdom, that the Most High had his wise plan and he sent his son, which died for humanity and paid the price, past, present, and future. And those that put their trust in him will have eternal salvation based on the free gift of his salvation, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Then, after the people who have this conversion, they are born again, they are born into the new age, the new world that is to come. They are born, their hearts are born into that kingdom. We are his children now, and we are part of his kingdom. And we are simply waiting for the kingdoms of this world to become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Because out of all the people, the son of man, the son of God, he is like us in that he experienced everything we have, the temptations, Yet he overcame that an example for us on how to do that and that it is possible. And he said, these things you will do and greater. Thank you for giving us your words to be able to teach us, guide us, and instruct us through these last days. While even in your word and your people, there is such vast deception. They don't know your words. They know other people's opinions about your words. So please teach us your words so that we have them for ourselves so that no one can distort the truth nor take us down the path of deception because your light of truth is guiding our way step that we take. And we work out our salvation. We practice goodness and what to do and what not to do. And we thank you for allowing us to make mistakes. But then when we do mess up, you permit us to go back on the path, sometimes without even severe consequences. We thank you for your blessings. Daniel, which was an Israelite, he and his people were carried away into captivity by King Nebuchadnezzar. And so King Nebuchadnezzar chose some of the finest of the people to be members of his palace to basically serve him. So Daniel, he took a stand early on. He was only a youth, 14, 15 maybe. He took a stand and would not defile himself the abominable foods that the Babylonians ate. And he took a stand early, and his buddies, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they all together were a unity of strength because they had each other. And that's what we need to find people who believe like us. And it's not going to be easy. It, it'll be, in fact, very difficult because the evil one does not want like-minded people which hold the truth to get together because with the prayer of the righteous availeth much according to the Most High, the prayer of the saints is the most powerful force on this earth. And to a carnal-minded, a worldly-minded person, that very statement seems foolish. And, and it certainly does, unless you have the words of the Most High. Faith comes by hearing, hearing of these words. So the more of these words we hear, the more we see how, wait a minute, what we were told, how, oh, this is just fairy tales, that's a fairy tale. Because to be thrown off this path of truth is devastating for your soul and for your eternal well-being. So think about this. There are entities out there who want to take you and bump you and push you off the path of truth so that you cannot discover righteousness and walking in that light because there's power in that. When the Most High, the Creator, He searches across all the earth for those who have faith. And when He finds those people he is right there, and his ear is attentive to their prayers. And he, the Most High, the Creator of the heavens and the earth and the sea and all that is in them, we have the ability to come to his throne with requests, and he hears us. And he sometimes can move heaven and earth to help us. So think about that, and then think about the contrast on how the entire educational system and science and media and the whole political and public sphere makes it out like that's a bunch of bull crap. That's a bunch. Of, that's fake. That's fraud. That's fairy tales. Oh, you just need someone to lean on because you're not strong enough within yourself. Any lofty thought and imagination that goes against those truths, we reject them because we can be sure you can stand on these words and never fall. No matter who comes against you, no matter if the most powerful dictator on earth is your opponent. They will always lose if you have these words. So the main purpose of the enemy is to get you away from these words. So however you can, well, if you don't like reading, then listen to it. Do like reading, read it and see the words and hear it 
and then it sinks in. And then when situations occur in this life, words of truth, through the power of the quickening Holy Spirit, the very mind of Christ himself dwells in you and shows you and guides you and leads you on tell you the right way and to give you knowledge we ask for the spirit of knowledge the spirit of knowledge is us knowing things that we have never learned because he gives us insight he gives us discernment to where that's why when peter and james and john they were brought before the, the sanhedrin and all the council and all the jewish leaders they were amazed. They could not believe, like, wait a minute, these guys are just fishermen. They're not elitely scholars like us who have been raised in all of education and the sciences and uh, the Talmud. So they couldn't believe what insight these apostles had. But then they realized, wait, wait a minute, they were with Messiah. They were with you. And that's why they're different. And that is the transformation hold lit fire the new church when the holy spirit came upon them at, at pentecost the whole world lit on fire for the kingdom and it hasn't stopped yet tyrants and dictators and wickedness which are battle we we don't fight against flesh and blood but principalities and spiritual forces evil in high places those inspire and they have geographical location over certain areas and certain entities certain presidents and dictators and stuff so they act on behalf. And that's why in Revelations it says, the Most High has put in their heart to fulfill His will and to agree so that they all are gathered together together in one place. He is directing it. The Most High is directing it. But here they scheme together as if they're going to take out God Himself. So He has put it in their hearts to fulfill His will and to agree. And so their destruction will all happen simultaneously. And then the rest of the people that are on earth that did not go along with that they were either deceived they did not choose they are are given a chance right they're given a chance through all these judgments and happenings on the earth is to point people to look up say hey everything you've seen and heard and experienced because the devil deceives the whole world all of that has been a deception all of it has been fake and a fraud and only with the light of truth those with words of the most high can see through this, the deception the ones they hand and that's what his people will all have in common. That's how you can know them. They have the truth. Seek after the truth. And if you find someone who rejects the truth, that's not someone you want to hang around because they will take you down. Daniel was given a vision. And this vision concerns us right now, today. This vision that Daniel was given was specifically written for us. Think about that. No other group of people on this earth now these words apply to us these are instructions for us to learn and apply with the other prophecies only those who are diligently learning them are able to find it and they cast out the works of other men because other men's opinions distort the actual reality of what the prophecies are saying prophecies have no private interpretation they are one message it's not this means that for that person oh what does this truth mean for you no there is one truth change is not heaven and earth will pass away his words will remain forever because there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth. His words, which he is, Yahushua is, Jesus is the word made flesh. So we stand on his words. We hang on his words. As the book of Enoch says, they put all their trust and their faith in his words. They will therefore be worded because you put your trust in the right place. Only one who is worthy of our trust Worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive glory and honor and power and riches and thanksgiving and blessing and strength. Because out of all the people, the son of man, the son of God, he is like us in that he experienced everything we have, the temptations, yet he overcame. That an example for us on how to do that and that it is possible. And he said, these things you will do and greater those who put their trust and their faith in him. Faith is so important because according to the Most High, Abraham believed Elohim, he believed God, and it was counted unto him as righteousness. And that faith which Abraham had is the same gospel faith, the good news, the faith in the Most High God. And those who believe in this, in this the gospel of the kingdom that the most high had his wise plan and he sent his son which died for humanity and paid the price 
past, present, and future. And those that put their trust in him will have eternal salvation based on the free gift of his salvation, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Then after the people who have this conversion, they are born again. They are born into the new age, the new world that is to come. They are born, their hearts are born into that kingdom. We are his children now, and we are part of his kingdom. And we are simply waiting for the kingdoms of this world to become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. For when that heavenly city comes down and comes on this earth, then heaven and earth rejoice. Because that's how it was supposed to be from the beginning until the devil, through his pride, through his jealousy of human beings, he corrupted this world. But the Most High has used his evil and his wickedness to discern out those who would choose him. Because only those who choose him and his ways will be in his kingdom. He only wants those who willingly want to be there. See, there's, no, there's no coercion. There's no forcing his kingdom. It's all a choice. When you are forced to do something against your will, that's of the devil, no matter what it is, where it is. And if you say, well, uh, I don't want to live for God. I don't want to do the things that are right. Well, then have at it. He will not force you. He is a still, small voice that requests you do the right thing. That you choose to do what is right because it is your wise choice to do so. Choose for yourself life that you may live. For his words and his laws are there to help and benefit us. They're not there to restrict us. They're there for our happiness and for our peace and for our freedom. Because when we break his laws, then we are damaging and hurting other individuals. We're hurting other people. So this goes all along with what I'm reading today, which I'm not going to read a lot, but it's all one unified story. And everything we read goes along with that general. Those who choose to use their will for his kingdom and his purposes, those are the ones who he puts in charge of his kingdom because he says, we inherit the earth with him. He is the great king, but he designates just like it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done as earth as it is in heaven. How is it in heaven? In heaven, there is a structural hierarchy where the Most High and the Son, their spirit, and then there's the cherubim, they protect their thrones. There's the archangels, which are the most powerful. But there's human beings down after that. There's different categories of angels. But after this thousand years is over, as we will be like the angels, then the human form is going to be the flesh part. Be no more. We will be like the angels. That's when it says, we will reign with him forever and ever. He will put in charge of his world those who choose to do his will now. When they have a choice to do whatever, they choose to do his will. Well, he knows they were put through the test. This life is to test and teach. For that, it's, it is excellent. It serves its purpose. Any other thing that we experience beyond those two things, bonus. We have excessive happiness and we always should have peace and joy. There's a lot of time turmoil and struggle and tests that we go through, but yet we have a peace in our heart to know that everything is allowed by him. There is nothing that happens to us that wasn't allowed. That we can know this is a test. What can we learn from this? And that's his idea. He doesn't want to punish us for the sake of doing us harm. He wants to punish us, put us back on the right path. We're going down to the path of destruction. He would not be a loving God if he just said, eh, sorry, your choice. No, those he loves, he edges back on. And at first it's little by little by little until he loves us so much, he will leave the rest of the 99 and come and get you. That's what true love is, how we should be others. And that just doesn't really exist now in the world, but that's why we need to bring it back. His kingdom begins with us. His kingdom is alive within us and has already begun here on this earth. And then when the physical kingdom appears, when he comes, there will be unity. And that's when the mountain of gold, the mountain of silver, the mountain of all those different mountains of metal will be used to build his immaculate. His and ours. This is Daniel chapter 7. One night during the first year of Belshazzar's reign over the Babylonian Empire, Daniel had a dream and he wrote it down. This is the description of what In my dream, I saw a great storm on a mighty ocean with strong winds blowing from every direction. Four huge creatures came up out of the water, each different from each other. 
And when it says waters, that means many peoples, symbolically. Then the four huge creatures came up out of the water, each differing from each other. First was like a lion that had an eagle's wings. And as I watched, its wings were pulled off so that it could no longer fly and was left standing on the ground. See, and, and these historically match the, the kingdoms that have already been, which have ruled the entire earth. These are the four. There's only been four, oh, shall be four. The fourth hasn't officially begun yet that will rule the entire earth. And this fourth is prophesied in the book of Second Ezra, in Revelations, all through the Old Testament. So it, he wants us to know these things so that we will know and not be afraid. Everybody else is, oh, there's war, there's this or that. It doesn't matter at all to us. Because we were told by our creator what is to happen. The second animal looked like a bear with its paws raised, ready to strike. And it held three ribs between its teeth. I heard a great voice saying, get up, devour much flesh. And the third of these strange animals looked like a leopard, but on its back had wings of those of a bird. And it had four heads. And great power was given to it over all mankind. As I watched in my dream, the fourth animal rose up out of the ocean. This is the one that Second Ezra is talking about. This is the one that takes over control and power over all the earth. As described in Revelations chapter 13, with the mark of the beast, he will require all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their forehead. And whosoever does not, they can't buy or sell. Then he's going to also require, make an image of himself the, the, the false prophet will make an image like a, a holographic or ai computer or whatever that everyone who does not worship and swear allegiance to it should be killed those are two separate events but it's all orchestrated by this beast that i am speaking of right now and think about how this could even be possible until now where you have a worldwide surveillance state then i watched in my dream a fourth animal rose up out of the ocean too dreadful to describe and incredibly strong devoured some of its victims by tearing them apart with its huge teeth and others crushed it beneath its feet it says in the king james that it trampled people the residue the nations under its feet and destroyed it and scattered it and it was far more brutal and vicious brutal means without mercy vicious means excessively like what's going on right now going in and slaughtering an entire country full of women and children in the name of God's chosen people. It is sickening how God's people are so deceived by this also. Well, they don't know. They don't know his words and they don't know actual history either. So how could they know? Unless there's someone to tell them. It was far more brutal and vicious than any of the other animals. And it had 10 horns. And I was looking at the horn. Suddenly, another small horn appeared among them. And three of the first ones were yanked out by the roots to give room for this little horn. The little horn had a man's eyes, bragging mouth, saying great things. And I watched as thrones were put in place. And this is giving a glimpse up into the heavenly realm all of a sudden. It just gave us a vision of what's going on on earth. The scene shoots up to heaven. And I watched as thrones were put in place and the ancient of days, the almighty God sat down to judge. His clothing was white as snow, his hair like the whitest of wool. In Ezekiel and Isaiah and Galatians, Enoch, it describes this scene exactly, all consistently. Several different people, they saw the same thing. He sat upon a fiery throne, brought in on flaming wheels. These wheels are wheels within wheels. They can go any direction. And these spiritual entities called cherubim are basically what carry him. His clothing was white as snow and his hair the whitest of wool. He sat upon a fiery throne brought in on flaming wheels and a river of fire flowed from before him. Ezekiel, Isaiah, they all speak of fire goes before him, devouring flame. He is a devouring fire. It's a, that's why no human being in our current form can ever be in his presence and not die. But we have to be made like him to be able to see him because in Revelations it says we will see his face and we will be his people, be our God. And a river of fire flowed from before him. Millions and millions of angels ministered to him. 10,000 times 10,000, it says. Hundreds of millions of people stood before him, waiting to be judged. Then the court began its session, and the books were opened. 
Remember this? And I saw heaven and earth fled away, and everybody was judged according to their works, and those whose names were not found written in the book of life cast into the lake of fire. But on those which had overcome, the second death has no power. They're not judged because they were washed in the blood of the Lamb, and their sins were put as far as the east is from the west. And on a not spinning, rotating, flying earth, that's the opposite direction. Hundreds and millions of people stood before him waiting to be judged. Then the court began its session and the books were opened. I watched as that brutal fourth animal was slain and its body was handed over to be burned because of its arrogance against the almighty God and the boasting of its little horn. As for the other animals, the other three, their kingdoms were taken from them, but they were allowed to live a short time longer. See, those countries are still in existence right now. They are allowed to live. Next, I saw the arrival of a man, one who was like the son of man, or so he seemed to be. And see, it always designates Yahushua. It always points him in all these scenes. He's always there. He was there with the father. He was there. He's the one that spoke with Abraham. He's the one that spoke with Moses. Because he, he couldn't have spoke with the father. He would have died. But the father did come the one time, and he made him turn his back, and the mountain was burned where he walked past. Next, I saw the arrival of man, or so he seemed to be brought there on the clouds from heaven. He approached the Ancient of Days and was presented to him. Remember, he comes on the clouds of heaven. Behold, he comes with the clouds, and every eye shall see him, they also which pierced him. And he was given the ruling power and glory over all the nations of the world, so that all the peoples of every language must obey him. In the time to come, he will rule with a rod of iron. There's not going to be protests or anything. All that's done away with because he is perfect righteousness and perfect justice and perfect goodness. But then at the very end, they rebel. The ones that had that in their heart, they all come against him in the end when Satan's released to test even them, make sure they decide only those who choose him are going to be in his final kingdom. His power is eternal. It will never end and his government shall never fall. I was confused and disturbed by all that I had seen, Daniel had wrote in his report. So I approached one of those standing beside the throne and asked him the meaning of all these things. And he explained, These four huge animals, he said, represent the four kings who will someday rule the earth, the four nations. But in the end, people of the Most High God shall rule the governments of the world forever and forever. The people of the Most High will rule. See, now the governments and the rulers, they're wicked. And they are put in place by the God of this world, Satan. That's not how it's going to be. See, when we say, oh, that's not fair, that's not right. Well, it's not, and it's not, but it will be. And that's what we have to see and know. And when we do see and know that, it makes it easy. It makes it bearable to withstand these things because we know that we have the greatest hope anybody has ever heard of. We can't even begin to hear or understand or imagine how awesome it's going to be. That's how good it is. The people of the Most High, God, shall rule the governments of the world forever and ever. And then I asked him about the fourth animal, the one so brutal and shocking, with its iron teeth and brass claws that tore men apart and stamped others to death with its feet. I asked also, too, about the ten horns and the little horn that came up after and destroyed the three other ones the horn with the eyes, and the loud, bragging mouth, the one that was stronger than all the others. For I had seen this horn warring against God's people and winning. He made war against the saints and was given to overcome them. But after the power of the holy people was broken, then the end comes. He makes war with the saints, but as soon as he allows them to be overcome, then he comes. Because that process is weeding out the people who are going to choose him or not. See, it's in his perfect timing. He has weighed the wage in the balance and measured the times by number. And he will not move or arouse them until that number is completed. Until the last person receives salvation, then the, he opens the clouds of heaven, the door of heaven, and comes with power and great glory. And every eye will see him, they also which pierced him. So everybody, whoever lived, will. That's what that means. For I had seen this horn warring against God's people and winning. Until the Ancient of Days came and opened his courts and vindicated his people, giving them worldwide powers of government. This fourth animal, he told me, is the fourth world power that will rule the earth. It will be more brutal than any of the others. It will devour the whole world like is happening right now with this new world order. 
are entities trying to control the entire earth, single few handful people. Well, it's spiritual entities behind them. It will devour the whole world, destroying everything before it. His ten horns are ten kings that will rise out of his empire. So there's going to be ten. They already have the earth broken up into ten sections, which they plan on separating them into during this new world order. The, the North American Union, Mexico, the United States, and Canada. If you'll notice, they just had a meeting talking about how eventually someday they'll merge together. That's what it's talking about. Ten horns. That's the, these ten regions. His ten horns are ten kings that will rise out of his empire. Then another king will arise, more brutal than the other ten. This is the Antichrist. And he will destroy three of them. He will defy the Most High God. And he will wear out the saints of the Most High with persecution. See, when he makes everybody to receive this mark, they cannot buy or sell. Whether they have the mark, that's when he makes war with the saints. Because he knows God's people aren't going to get this mark. That's when that war begins, officially. He will wear down the saints with persecution. He will try to change all laws and morals and customs. Oh, now murder's fine, as long as the government says it is. The truth can set people free. That's all there is. God's people will be helpless in the hands, his hands, for three and a half years. And Yahushua says, when this happens, then flee. Flee into the wilderness. And the woman will flee into the wilderness with his people. He'll protect them for three and a half years. But then the Ancient of Days will come and open his court of justice and take all the power from this vicious king to consume and destroy until the end. Then all nations under heaven and their power shall be given to the people of the Most High God, and they shall rule all things forever, and all rulers shall serve and obey them. That was the end of the dream. When I woke, I was greatly disturbed. And my face was pale with fright, but I told no one what I had seen. See, a lot of Jewish people, they want to remove the book of Daniel and they call it a fraud because it's so accurately depicted history, so ac accurately depicted what's going to happen. But what they hate is that all the peoples under heaven are going to be his people. That means they're not as special as they think to where they can control, take advantage of and do evil and wicked things, but they can get away with it because they're God's people. That's the mindset I come up against. They're using that name, they're using his name to act in wickedness. I, Daniel, was grieved in my spirit in the midst of my body, and the visions in my head troubled me. And I came near to under one of them and, that stood by and asked him the truth of all this. Came to one of the angels or one of the people that were there. So he told me and made me know the interpretation of these things. These great beasts, which are four, are four kings, which shall arise from the earth. But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom and possess the kingdom forever, even forever and ever. Then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and whose nails of brass. What's made of brass? Bullets. Iron. Gun barrel. Which devoured and broke in pieces and stamped the residue with its feet. The army of which is going to be 200 million. 200,000 thousand. This is Daniel. And of the ten horns that were on his head, and the other which came up, and before him three fell, even of that horn had eyes, and a mouth that spoke very great words, whose look was more stout than his fellows. In other words, he's ruthless. He has no humanity. He is totally wicked. I beheld, and the same horn made war with the saints, prevailed against them. Now, war does not assume that one side is just completely devastated and devoured and doesn't fight back. Okay, a war insinuates that there are sides exchanging blows. And I beheld in the same horn, made war with the saints and prevailed against them until the ancient of days came and the judgment was given to the saints of the Most High. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. This is when he returns. Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be so much different from all the kingdoms and devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it into pieces. So when you see a entity ruling the whole earth, that's this. And there's so much more about this prophecy. Find out when that kingdom arises, this is it. And the ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. And another shall rise after them. And they shall be diverse from the first and shall subdue three kings. In Revelations, it says power was given unto them. And they gave their power unto the beast to fulfill his will, right? They gave all their power to the Antichrist all these 10 kings. 
and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and he shall wear out the saints of the Most High. See, it says that he shall claim that he is God, and that he is great. Anything that is God, that's him, and that he should be called God, and that he sits in the place of God. And he shall think to change times and laws, and they shall be given into his hands for a time, times, and a dividing of times, three and a half years. But the judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion to consume and to destroy it into the end. And the kingdom, and the dominion, and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. See, he is the ultimate head. We are under him. Hitherto is the end of the matter. As for Daniel, my, my conjugations troubled me. He was really sick after that. And at that time, this is when the Antichrist comes. When Michael stands up, then the Antichrist is allowed to come because when Michael stands up, there's war in heaven. And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought and prevailed not. Neither was their place anymore found in heaven. And that dragon, that old serpent, the devil, was cast out of heaven, him and his angels with him. But woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea the devil has come down upon you having great wrath because he knows he has but a short time. So that's what this is. At that time, Michael shall stand up the great prince, which stands for the children of thy people. In the book of Enoch, it says that Michael stands over the best of humanity. That's God's children. He protects God's children. The most powerful angel God has, he protects his people. He stands for the children of my people and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time and never will be. And at that time, Thy people shall be delivered, every one of them that are found written in the book. Every one will be delivered. Every one will be saved. And as many of them as sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Everybody that has already been dead shall awake. Some to everlasting life come to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that shall be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness shall shine as the stars forever and ever. And isn't it funny how it relates it to that stars? Because the glory and intensity of the star that represents you depends on the place you hold in the eternal realm. But you, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end. These words are not to be able to be understood until the time of the end. So if we understand them now, we're there. And many shall run to and fro, transportation exponentially increased. You look at how transportation is, the flying and the trains and everything in the last hundred years, never before in history. And knowledge shall be increased. Look, you can ask your phone any question on earth and it's there and immediately. We're here. Then I, Daniel, looked and behold, there stood two others, one on the river and the side of the bank and the other that sat on the bank of the river. And one said to the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river, how long shall it be till the end of these wonders? I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the waters of the river. And when he held up his right hand and his left to heaven and swore by him that lives forever and ever, that it shall be for a time, times and times a half, three and a half years, 1,230 days. And when, when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, when the Antichrist has finally destroyed the power of God's people, well, there's no more reason for this age to be here anymore because the last person, the age is sealed up. So you see, it's all in this timing. That's why it says we can speed along his coming by preaching the gospel of the kingdom. Then when he has finished, he has accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, then all these things will be finished. It's all in his perfect timing. He is not surprised in the least bit by anything. And he said, go your way, Daniel, for the words are closed up and sealed to the end of time. Many shall be purified and made white and tried and tested, but the wicked shall do wickedly even more so. And none of the wicked shall understand. None of the wicked shall understand. So if someone just doesn't understand, but the wise shall understand. And from the time that the daily sacrifice is taken away and the abomination that makes desolate is set up, there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days. Blessed is he that waits, comes to the thousand three hundred and thirty-fifth day. These people are going to be holding on for dear life and the Most High has given them a specific amount of days that they have to hang out until. Blessed is he that waits and comes to the 1,335th days. But go your way until the end, for you shall rest and stand in your place at the end of the days. So we're going to see Daniel. We're going to, be, we're going to see all of them. 
be able to talk to him. We can ask da David, you know, how big was the rock he used for Goliath? But we thank you, Yahuwah Elohim. We thank you for your words and your truth. And you know the end from the beginning, the past from the present. You know the future. The future is held in your hand. See everything all at once. We ask you to help and guide us, direct our path, help us to walk righteously with you, help us to be wise, and help us to understand, help us to bring many to righteousness. Please guide and direct our path and help us to do your will, act righteously.